That's impressive. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I've been here for when it hasn't, and I have nothing to do with it either way. Yeah. So, okay, then. So, welcome, everybody, to... Are we on silent? Yes. Uh, Mute. Uh, welcome to the Ranunculus Knit Along, week one. Mm -hmm. um, we're here. We're yeah. making sweaters again. I know. It, it's, it, it got warm and then it's cold again. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into it. <laughs> I know. We got a little bit of summer. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I wore my summertime ranunculus. Yeah. Now I'm wearing my springtime ranunculus. Yeah, it's lovely. I also packed a winter ranunculus because you never can tell. No. Uh, the weather changes on a dime. So. Yeah, and I um, I pulled mine out of the closet and I pulled out uh, a, one that I'm working on. Mm. And I wanted to, to check, I wanted to compare the gauges on all of them. Oh, that's because fun. Because I'm, as you know, not a... Not a gauge swatcher. <laughs> not a gauge swatcher. <laughs> I, uh, I took my chances not to make a gauge swatch earlier mm -hmm. this, because uh, it was last month. And um, I got burned I got Ooh. burned by the yes. gauge, but we'll talk yes. about that in the fall when we do that knit along. Yeah. Um, we'll save that <laughs> little, uh, that little. <laughs> that was so funny. My, my tree oh, lemur my sweater gosh. that I knit. <laughs> Hi, it's very cute. Thanks for joining. It's very cute. Um, okay. So should we jump into it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So. so I think the first thing that we were going to talk about was yarn choices. Yeah. Yeah. We're making this pattern it's called the ranunculus mm -hmm. i'm wearing one can mm -hmm. we hold up one of yours yep yep i've got a couple here it's a beautiful let's describe this sweater before we jump into the yeah yarn choices. so this is a top down sweater um it has a round yoke construction until you hit right above the sleeves and then there's a little bit of raglan yep so there's a little bit of um there's increasing throughout mm -hmm. And then the increasing moves to the shoulder seams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lace portion and there's lots of texture in here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not as scary as you might think. No. No. And it is just as addictive as you've heard. Yeah. Because you have a pile and I have a pile. Yes. And I think uh, this is number six for me. This. <laughs> Step by step, the some of the points we're going to refer you to videos that we've already done, mm -hmm. or um, videos that we're going to be uploading. Yep. But if you have questions at any point, if you need a demonstration, let us know. This is an interactive process, mm -hmm. so if you have questions one week and we don't get to them, we will get to them the next week. If you email the shop or you put a comment in the same video yeah. and say, "I can't figure this out," we can cover it in the next live video. That's not yeah, a problem. exactly. And I mean, we'll we'll cover as much as we can. It is a, a paid pattern, yeah. so of course you'll have to, you know, purchase the pattern and get all the specific numbers there. It's sort of a coaching. Yeah, yeah we're gonna we're gonna thing. get you through this process. Yeah, and ourselves too. Yeah, <laughs> more ridiculous. <laughs> Um, yeah, so okay. yarn choices. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one of those kind of funny sweaters that mm. seems to work with such a wide range of yarn choices because it's knit on such a large needle, I think. Exactly. Um, so you, I think the original pattern is lace or light fingering weight. Yes. Yeah. Often like a mohair mm -hmm. where you're letting the large gauge give space for that mohair to exist. Mm -hmm. in between the stitches themselves mm -hmm. yeah so the description in the beginning of the pattern it says lace or light fingering weight yarn and the degree of transparency depends on the weight of the yarn mm -hmm. so you'll see a lot of patterns a lot of finished projects on Ravelry and you'll see um, a very different oh yeah sweater yes um, on every person um, and a lot of that has to do with the yarn choice. So this, um, the one that um, Emily has here. Yeah, bring it out. Is this, uh, what weight of yarn is this? Is <laughs> this? That's a It looks like question. fingering. It looks like fingering. It's, yeah, it's, um, it was a variable yarn. Okay. This was a sort of a random kind of plant fiber based mix, mm -hmm. um, thick and thin. And so there are some parts that are very, very fine, and there's some that are yeah. very chunky. You can see it's very sheer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I use that usually to layer over like a dress or a tank top. Yeah. This is my summer ranunculus because it's breezy and mm -hmm. light, and the air just goes through it, and it kind of floats and whatnot, despite not having any mohair in it. Yeah, whatsoever. yeah. 
And then this, in contrast, this mm. is one that I made with a DK weight yarn. Yeah. So you can see this is more like a sweater sweater. Yes. So uh, it's a lot denser. Um, I really like this, uh, I, I really like a DK weight mm -hmm. sweater on this gauge of needle because it's not heavy. Yes. I have a worsted weight sweater, which is just one, one larger than DK. And I think it was knit on a four millimeter or a four and a half. Mm, that's really... And it's not, it's not stiff, but it's just very um, heavy. It's present. <laughs> yeah, it's warm, it's lovely. Yeah. But this has a lot more kind of bounce and drape to it while mm. still being really warm. Yeah, it's yeah. a really good transitional piece. I have mm -hmm. mostly knit cropped versions for myself, which I layer over button downs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really good if you're trying to be in a space that's a little bit warm, but then there's also a breeze, maybe mm -hmm. there's an event or something near where you're sitting. So, yeah. so yarn choice plays a huge role. Um, and this one's really great because you held two yarns, right? Yeah, so this one I held together um, a fingering weight and a lace mohair. So I'll bring it up a little bit closer. So it, I guess that works out to what a, a sport or a DK? Yeah, probably sport. So. Uh, somewhere between. Yeah. So it's not quite as thick as the DK, but the uh, mohair gives it a really nice fuzzy mm -hmm. halo. Yeah. And this is a really, really like fuzzy, warm, mm -hmm. cozy sweater. Yeah. And the one that I didn't bring was the one that we have in the shop. Right. Which is knit out of a yarn that we don't carry anymore, but it's mm -hmm. basically, that one was like an alpaca cotton blend, mm -hmm. but a mohair just on its own would give you something very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, um, if you see the one in the shop, it's, v it's very airy and almost like a cobweb. Yeah. Very like floaty. Very floaty. Would yeah. be really pretty on, on layered on top of like a dress or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Something slinky underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a great question from Susie, which is, is it the same gauge no matter the yarn? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, <laughs> so as you might've noticed, all the yarns that we're talking about, fingering, lace, DK, sport, even worsted, mm -hmm. are all smaller than you would traditionally knit on a six millimeter needle. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if you knit with anything that's finer than, I would say an Aran weight, mm -hmm. so finer than a yarn that would normally sit on a six millimeter quite happily in like a standard um, sweater, uh, then you should be able to get roughly the same gauge. The one that I'm wearing, there was the first one that I knit and I was a bit worried about being able to fit into the largest size. So mm -hmm. I knit it on a six and a half and I would say it's definitely a little bit looser than I would mm -hmm. go. But traditionally all the ones that I've knit so far for myself seem to fit basically the same. Yeah, I found the same thing. Yeah. Um, the, the other ones that I've made, um, I didn't increase I didn't always increase the bust as much. So I think on these ones, I went up to a 48, but I've made, okay. I've, I think yeah. I made the first one just as is mm -hmm. um, from the pattern. It, and it's more of a fitted, yeah, like a little bit more of a fitted sweater, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted a more boxy okay. fit. Yeah. So, I, so I did the increases. Yes. Uh, Nancy yeah. has a great point in terms of yardage, mm -hmm. which is that the yardage can vary so much. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, if you want to expand the pattern a little bit further, if you want to do like a longer body so it's mm -hmm. not so cropped. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's different sleeve options. Mm -hmm. I think if you if you knit it, um, the, the small range of the yarn yardage that they give you yep. is for cropped and short sleeved. Mm. Um, which I have never made one that's cropped and that's that, that that's that cropped <laughs> yep. and short sleeved. Yep. I've made mine a little bit longer just because that's the fit I prefer. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for this one, this was a DK, um, my DK one. I think I used three skeins of DK, mm -hmm. which would be yeah about um, what is that like two hundred and. 40 times three. So yeah, like 700 some yeah. yards, yeah. Yeah, so still not a lot of yarn. No. And I did long sleeves on this too. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. My crop, so I usually knit the largest size, which mm -hmm. um, we're gonna talk in about fit in a second, but the largest bust size in 
like actual finished garment size is right around my bust measurement, which is about 60, 62 mm -hmm. inches. Um, and so I always knit the large one. And this one, which, you know, gets me past the bust line, mm -hmm. <laughs> past the underbust. Yeah. I think this one was maybe three skeins of DK. Um, I would say for my size, I would probably buy, I think I bought five skeins of a worsted weight yarn with a standard yardage, mm -hmm. which is about 200 meters, 220 yards. Okay. Um, when I was on vacation to knit a worsted weight version because mm -hmm. I was so jealous of yours. Of your DK. <laughs> yeah. um, so they, they t it's a little bit of a nuanced kind of clock. I would say um, grab, uh, try one. Yeah. Unless it was the worst experience of your life, which I really hope it isn't with us helping you yeah. the way. Yeah. Uh, you will definitely make a second one. <laughs> you will definitely make a second one. Yeah. What I've also done is I've looked at um, people's projects on Ravelry. Yes. Just yes. to get an idea, like how much, like, was this a small person? Was this a bigger person? Yeah. Was, is it cropped? Is it long sleeved? And people will often write how much yarn they, they ended yes. up using. And and then buy a little bit extra if you're going to make it longer and the like the balloon sleeves mm -hmm. will use more yarn than a tapered sleeve or a cap sleeve cap sleeve yeah. you know just take all those things into account yeah mm -hmm. and also when you're looking at project pages on Ravelry keep in mind if people are holding two yarns and the project yes. says we use 2,000 yards of yarn that means they probably used a thousand of each so if you're mm -hmm. substituting for one strand you just need a thousand mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any Yeah, there's a couple questions. more. Nancy's got one. Nancy's a mind reader. She knows what we're going to talk about next. <laughs> but um, Katie first. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, so Katie says, are you planning to only talk about the short sleeve version or will you discuss balloon sleeves? Yeah, we'll discuss all the sleeves. Yeah. 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 So there's, uh, I have opinions on all of the sleeves <laughs> that I must share. Yes. I've got my soapbox. <laughs> we all have opinions. My soapbox. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's Katie's question. Um, and then Nancy's second question was, how about the amount of ease that I should aim for? I have a 43 inch bus and want some space. Yeah. Yes. So this is the so, next topic we wanted to talk about. Exactly. How to choose your size. Exactly. So in this pattern. My pages are all mixed up. That's Sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm just looking for the schematic here. Yeah. So. That's the larger one. Is it? There you go. <laughs> there. Okay. So if you look at this Sorry. schematic on your pattern, um, it's going to tell you what the measurement is of the bust. So this in the drawing, it's just a cropped version and it'll tell you what the circumference is here. Knit just as is, um, which is B 50 and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so this is where explaining gauge is my brain will try to meet all the points. But basically, <laughs> basically, um, your, your bus size plus however much ease you want. How so much extra. How much extra fabric. Yeah. So if you, a good way to, to look at it is if you put down, put a shirt that you, that fits yes. you well, yes. lay it down and measure the bust on that to get an idea of how how wide of a garment is comfortable for you to wear. Exactly. Um, yeah, and find then, one in your closet that fits the way that you want this Yeah, garment. yeah. So in that case, um, you said, I think you said 43. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are 43, uh, 43 inch bust. So if you knit this sweater, with a 50, uh, 50 inch circumference, that will give you seven inches of ease, which means seven inches of extra fabric. So okay. that might be three and a half inches on either side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did I do it right? Yeah. So like if you pick, <laughs> so this one has a little bit of ease on it. Yeah. I can pinch some of the fabric. Some of the yeah. other ones I have are like quite close and fitted. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be zero ease. Or negative ease. Or ne yeah. negative ease would mean it's, it um, tightens in, yeah. so it's smaller than 43, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. So the pattern, I think, was originally written mm -hmm. as one of those one-size-fits-all. Mm -hmm. So you have the one size in the pattern, and then 
whatever size you are, so long as you're mm -hmm. under 50 and three quarters of an inch, mm -hmm. then you'll get a varying amount of ease. And then yeah. she also published, after the fact, a subsequent PDF on mm -hmm. um, additional larger bust uh, modifications. Mm -hmm. And so there's a point in this pattern, and I believe... It's at the, at section four. Yep, section four. You <laughs> then hop over to this modified section. You do the size, the, the part that corresponds to your size, mm -hmm. and then you hop back to yep. a regular pattern. Yeah, so you just kind of plug in those numbers there. So I think what Caitlin said, what her suggestion was, um, was the soundest thing mm -hmm. to do. If you, if you fit under this measurement for the original pattern and you just want to do one and be done with it. Like, you know, how, mm -hmm. how I treated this one, we mm -hmm. just get one off the needles and, mm -hmm. and try it out. Um, then you could get the first size. If you're worried about that, if you want, like some of the models in the, in the source pictures yeah. have big billowy, like 10, 15, 20 yeah. inches of extra ease. Yeah. Like, um, you might want to knit a larger size. Like where the sweater kind of comes out here. Exactly. The, it's hard to see in this photocopy I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I only have a black and white But printer. if you look at your pattern, you'll see it's like a drop, not a drop shoulder, but like a, almost like a poncho. Yeah. Shoulder. Yeah. yeah. It's like the swancho, the sweater swancho. Yeah, sweater swancho. swancho. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So. And no, Nancy, the ease should not really change depending on the yarn weight. Um, what's happening is the needle size is going to be mostly dictating how big of a sweater you get. Right. Um, as opposed to the yarn. The yarn's kind of along for the ride. When you knit with a smaller yarn, you get more space in between the stitches. You get mm -hmm. that sort of lacier, more open look. And then with the thicker yarn, you're still going to get the same size. It's just going to be less space yeah. in the stitches. It's kind of one of those magic sweaters in that way. Yeah. The it Love just, Note is another one that's yeah, very similar. Because... The so Caitlin's cat is um, climbing the fridge right now. Yeah, um, because it's not on such large needles, it uh, it works with so many different yarn weights yeah. and doesn't really change the outcome. Yeah, um, of, the, of the fit. Yeah, if you're like a clumsy person um, and you find that like it's too the one that you knit is too loose, then you can use a thicker yarn for the next. One. I like mm. that we're just referring to. The, yeah, you're gonna make a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on your second one. Well, and you said you used a larger needle for this. I one. did. So this is perfect because Amy's yeah. asking about needle size. So the pattern calls for a six millimeter needle for mm -hmm. the body. Yep. And a and then five for the... A five for the sleeves. Doesn't say for the neckline, but I just cast one on. For, sorry, for finishing the sleeves. Yes. So like the, the cuffs sleeves. and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just cast one on and used a five millimeter for the cast on because mm -hmm. I... Yeah, I just cast another one on this evening. Um because I'm using a plant-based yarn and I'm worried it's a linen and I'm worried that it's gonna stretch. Okay. Like too far. And so okay. I wanna give it just a little bit more stability and mm -hmm. then if I have to, I'll go in with a crochet hook and okay. it up a little so, bit. Yeah. So yeah, that would go into necklines. Yeah, oh, but before we do, mm -hmm. so the, yeah, so those are the two needles. Mm -hmm. um, and Susie is wondering about uh, getting gauge. So Susie, you, you will basically get gauge with mm -hmm. the, the, the finer yarns. So if you were using um, a fingering weight, you would get something very similar gauge-wise. Mm -hmm. You just have more space in between the stitches. Yeah. So right? So very this is oh, there's, sheer. <laughs> there's the pull that I pulled through the yeah. other side. I uh, talked about um, clumsy. So that versus mm -hmm. the thicker yarn. That's the worst. This is the DK. Yeah. And you can see it's a lot denser. You can't yeah. see as easily through. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what's going to change with the yarn. Um, however, if you are nervous, and I completely understand because normally I am the person at the bench who's like, do a gauge swatch. <laughs> um, if you want, we do have instructions on how to do a gauge swatch um, at the beginning of our Felix Noodle Along. And mm -hmm. it does not hurt you at all to do a gauge swatch. No, no. Do it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the questions. Uh, you, you answered Susie's. I made my sample, but, but got 17 stitches instead of four. Okay. So I would go up, um, a needle size or maybe two okay. yeah, to try to get gauge. Yeah. And also, did you do a gauge swatch in the round or? Oh, I hate doing that. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
is why I don't do gauge watches. I'm like, so your gauge does I'm like change. asking all the right yeah. questions, but you are secretly not doing it. And the facade <laughs> is breaking down. I am very yeah. strong about gauge, except for when I have to do it in yeah. the round. Your tension can change when you do it in the round versus yeah. flat. Um, but uh, I would just try going up a needle size and mm -hmm. seeing if that will help out with the issue. So that's what I did with this one. I went on a six and a half instead of a six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Katie, let's talk about, hey, Katie and Emily, you guys are brain readers. Yeah. Let's talk about net climb. Let's talk yeah. about the beginning of the pattern. Okay. Because there's more choices to make. So many choices. It's like a choose your own adventure. <laughs> it is. It's the sisterhood of the traveling sweater. Or yes. The, 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 the siblinghood <laughs> of the traveling sweater. Yeah. Thank you. You can see I was struggling. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're on an adventure together. Yeah. So let's talk necklines. Yeah. So, okay. So here's where I... Uh, <laughs> This is like a confession zone uh, with us. Yes. It's it's been what one month since my last confession. <laughs> um so I uh so the pattern suggests um it suggests two different necklines. Mm -hmm. So a wider neckline or a smaller neckline. And which one did you do here? That's a great question. I went back to my project page. I took okay. a small neckline. Okay. And then it was too small to fit over my head. Oh. So then when I finished the sweater, I actually ripped out the ribbing okay. straight to round eight, mm -hmm. which is sort of like your increase row after your ribbing. Oh, okay. And so I, I ripped those out. I picked up the stitches and redid the ribbing. And I might have done the decrease. I can't remember. Okay. Oh, no. I didn't even rib at all. I just, I just Okay. I just bound it off. And I bound it off on a larger needle. I bound it off on an eight millimeter. Okay. So that it wouldn't be super tight. And what about this one? I that missed. one, I did the long, the wider the neckline. Wide. Yeah. And this one turned, this is why I went down for my uh, my linen. I have a huge head, so I had, I think, fairly justified concerns about okay. being able to fit my yeah. new project on my head. So, but this is also, it's expanded quite a bit. It usually sort of rests like a mm -hmm. raw strap line on me. Mm -hmm. um, so... I could go in and take a crochet hook and just do a little slip stitch in like a white yarn. Yeah, if you, the edge if you want to stabilize to tighten it. it up. Yeah. And then I also did the wide neckline on this one too. Mm -hmm. But because it's a wool yarn, it has a tendency to bounce back a little bit. Okay. This one usually sits, it's not like right up against my neck, but it'll sit like top or second button okay. on a button down yeah. for my wider neckline. Yeah. So, so there are two two neckline options, mm -hmm. and the thing that I was going to confess is that I don't do either. Of those. <laughs> so what I so when we started doing the uh, the ranunculus a few years ago, um, a lot of people were having issues with the cast on because it's a different cast on. It's not mm -hmm. hard; it's just different, yeah. and a lot of people were finding they were having to try, you know. Yeah, try a, take Rip a few tr a few tries at it basically, yeah. and when I looked at the sample, I think it was a, a linen yeah sample. I think yes. yeah. I didn't like how it looked. Anyway, I I didn't like the it kind of it stretches a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's yes. um it's we saw on this one. Yeah, and I kind of wanted more of a sweater sweater, not a. Um, it looked too blousy for me. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So I wanted a sweater. So what I did was I figured out how many stitches they want you to have by the end of the... The increase? The, um, yeah. So by the end of round eight. Yeah. By the end of the ribbing mm -hmm. that they wanted you to do, okay. I figured out how many, how many stitches mm -hmm. you would have at that point. Yeah. And I just cast that on. Yeah. So... And what cast on did you use? But I used the long tail cast on. <laughs> That's just the one I use for a lot of stuff. I also yeah. used the long tail cast on. I'm pretty sure at one point, it might have been this one, mm -hmm. I tried to follow the one in the video. Okay. Um, but I like the long tail. Mm -hmm. And I don't like yeah. having to look stuff up when I yeah. when I'm like got cast on itis. Um, that being said, I do have from both like teaching this and helping customers with this pattern. Mm -hmm. We do have, I have 
oh, sorry, video link <laughs> favorited. And we're going to put that in the description of this video once it's saved to YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, that will, it's the best video I found for this special cast on the double twist loop method. It's okay. really, it's like, it's really clear. It's a very clear video. I have been using it to refer people to mm -hmm. for the last, like, I don't know, four or five years. Yeah. Um, so if you would really like to try this cast on, go for it. I'm going to send you to the video of the people who like are the professionals on this cast on. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, do, 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 do. Yeah. So run that run says, so if you started at the 90 stitches, yeah, yeah. did you then still do some ribbing rows? Yes. So I cast on the number. So did you cast on this number or this number? This number. Okay. Right. So yeah, round eight number. Yeah. The, yeah. Being careful not to divulge all the secrets I mean, of the pay pattern. I was going to say, like, I think 10,000 yeah. people have done this. I know, right? Point. I'm sure so, the secret's out. Yeah, so I just cast on the, that number of stitches, and then I did, what was it? Uh, this one calls for Knit seven. one, purl one. Yeah. Yep, knit one, purl one. Did you do the back loop or just knit one, purl one? Just knit one, purl one. Because I also don't like knitting. <laughs> you don't like knitting through the back loop? No. That's bad. That's what I did on this one, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Knit one, purl one. Awesome. And it... I find it doesn't stretch too much because I didn't mm -hmm. want um, I didn't want like a stretched yep. neck. Yep. I wanted a sweater sweater. Yeah. Yep. And we can. And it looks good. Thank you. I've seen her wear it. We can include That's some pictures really of us good. wearing our <laughs> ranunculus. If people want to see like how, how different ones fit, maybe we can share some pictures. Oh no, Nat, you ripped out the cast on for the third time in 40. I am sorry to hear yeah. that. Uh, if it makes you feel better, that was me the first time I made one. That ha that's happened to a lot of people. It yeah. is an unusual cast yes. on. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's why so many so, people that we know are just like... So don't feel bad about that. Yeah. It's yeah. just... You are not alone. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we've talked about necklines mm -hmm. and cast ons. Um, the next thing we were going to talk about was... Doo, 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 doo. Oh, wait, I had one more thing to talk about oh, necklines. Okay. Um, there is an option, a third option that we didn't discuss, which mm -hmm. is that if you don't want to choose your neckline now, okay, you could, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but you could do a provisional cast on of the number of stitches in row round eight, mm -hmm. then work round eight and the rest right. of the sweater, and at the very end, you take out your provisional cast on, put those stitches back on the needle, mm -hmm. and you could do a decrease, you could do ribbing. Yeah figure it out afterwards once you have the rest of the sweater sitting on your body and just sort of gauge where you want it to sit. Yeah, yeah. I think the... It's not a beginner technique, that's for sure. It, yeah, the love note has... Something uh, similar. similar. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. similar to that. They have you knitting it after the fact. Ooh. Um, yes, Nancy, maybe we can get some pictures of people wearing it. Yeah, and if you, it, you know, if you want pictures now... <laughs> You Ravelry. Could, you could also check Ravelry. Or, or Instagram. Instagram, um, Ravelry. If you look up the yeah. um, the uh, hashtag um, Ranunculus Sweaters. But mm -hmm. Ravelry would be better because then it will tell you more information. Yeah. Like how much yarn Hopefully. they used, what kind of yarn they used, all that kind of Sometimes stuff. Sometimes they'll put bus measurements in. So, you, you know. I'm always scanning for people with a similar body shape and size to mine. Exactly. But sometimes when you click, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Now this is really like... Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's super helpful. Yeah. That's the the beauty of yeah. of Ravelry. And Donna has one last comment suggestion, mm -hmm. which is that she's knitting hers with a single ply yarn, so okay. she's held the yarn double for the cast on mm. to give it some extra strength. And I think that's a really that's a clever really idea. great idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 because uh, single ply can be a little bit. Um, more delicate yeah it can untwist a little bit as you're yeah. knitting and that could add a little weakness yeah that's a great idea yeah yeah okay. <laughs> uh okay so we figured out neckline we've cast on our neckline mm -hmm. using long tail like i said video is in or the long tail cast ons in our felix week one mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. um and we're then, gonna we're gonna work to get some uh just standalone video yes. going just so we, it's easier for you to reference these and you don't have to then uh yeah. yeah, scroll through videos. Yeah. Um, and then we've got round eight, 
which is an increase row that has an increase that we haven't done before in one of these videos. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk about that at some point, but maybe we'll save the demos to the end so we do them all. Sure. Yep. Do them all at once. Um, and then once we move from round eight, we get into section two, which is short rows. <laughs> um, uh, we, again, like Caitlin said, we're sort of scrambling this evening. We're going to put together some nicer, clearer, crisper mm -hmm. videos um, mm -hmm. and shorter videos to show you some of these key techniques. Um, mm -hmm. We have covered the technique of German short rows, which is referenced in this pattern um, in the Felix week three video mm -hmm. at about the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Um, I really like how she has or how they the pattern designer has written out the short row section yes i do too because i i don't uh have this technique mastered to the and, point where i can yeah. i'm just like oh i know what i'm doing and i still put markers in after yeah. every turn and then i resolve the i take the markers out every time mm -hmm. i resolve the german short row mm -hmm. um but the way that this pattern is written is it it makes it very clear where you're turning what the center marker around which you're doing your short rows mm -hmm. are. And I guess maybe we should explain what short rows are really quickly. Yeah. Because I'm sure lots of people watching have not done our Felix video. Yeah. So short rows are basically where you, so you start by knitting your sweater in the round around your neckline. Um, and then to build up more fabric, usually in the back, mm -hmm. uh, to keep to the- To account for the hunch? To, well, to, <laughs> you know, so that you're, so that it's not like pulling back on your neck. Yeah pulling um, forward on your neck. Um, so you stop knitting in the round and you knit, I'll, I'll pretend this is my back, my front so you can see. So instead of knitting in the round, mm -hmm. you start knitting back and forth across the back mm -hmm. to create an extra wedge of fabric. And then you go back to knitting in the round. And in this pattern actually you do it in the front and the back. The yeah. back is deeper. And the mm -hmm. front is a little bit shallower, but basically it makes it so that, like Caitlin said, it's not going to ride up on your neck. Yeah. 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 It's going to sit nicely. Um, and I have, this is what I did last, tonight mm -hmm. after work, bracing Ooh. before I had to come over. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of hard to demonstrate, but here you can see that not much fabric has been knit. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, this is a section that wasn't really touched by the short rows. But here, near my beginning of round marker, at mm -hmm. the back of the sweater, you can see lots more fabric has been yeah. knit. Lots yeah. more fabric has been knit. And that's what the short rows does, is it allows you to add more rows in certain spots without mm -hmm. um, hitting mm -hmm. some of the other spots. Yeah, I think of it as kind of like coloring it in almost. Yeah. Like you're yeah. just kind of going back and forth. Swooping it in. And then bit, yeah. going back to... Yeah, in the exactly. Front. It's a really cool... It, it really is like one of those moments when you're doing it, you're like, oh, I'm like 3D printing, but old school. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's a really cool thing. How many more analogies can we come up with? <laughs> okay. uh, right. So for the German short rows, like I said, we've got the tutorial. Mm -hmm. We'll get you another video, um, hopefully yeah. this week, that um, does the technique really quickly. Um, and I think that point at the end mm -hmm. of section two was where we were, we were going to stop for the week. Mm -hmm. That's your homework, as yep. it um, And then if uh, anyone runs into, like, major problems, give us a shout. Yeah, definitely, you know, comment here. Mm -hmm. um, or email the store if you need to. Yep. Yeah. Um, so. We, before we jump into demos, did mm -hmm. anyone have any questions? Was there something else you wanted to talk about? No, I was just thinking about the short rows. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can do a quick demonstration of those, too, if you want. We could. Well, if we have time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a okay. life, Caitlin. <laughs> Nancy, um, you can be wherever you want. That that's I'm gonna use oh, this she a segue. Where should we be for next week? So you can be wherever you want. You do not have to keep pace with us. Next week we're gonna start at section three, the mm -hmm. yoke. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to catch up, go for it. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of our colleagues. Uh, is up the yeah. screen with the sleeves. Um, <laughs> and we've been doing this for 38 yeah. minutes. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it, once you get going on it, it's a, it's a really quick sweater. Like yeah. when, there's there's certain parts um, you know, like you said, mm -hmm. with the cast on where you have to try it a few times yeah. sometimes. 
Um, but once you get going on it, yeah. the actual knitting of it is pretty quick because yeah. it's on such a big needle. So it, it feels really good. The progress of it feels it really does. good. I arrived here and I was like, look at how much I knitted. <laughs> this is an hour's work. Oh my God, I've been knitting God. <laughs> We're like knitting in the car on the way here. <laughs> and driving? No. <laughs> If only I had a self-driving car. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Okay, so, so you want to set it up? Yeah, let's do okay. some demos real quick. I'm going to show you, remind everybody what the knit one through the back loop looks like. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the right lifted increase, or it's RLI in your pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like an invisible, lit, somewhat invisible mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. And then um, if we've got time, I will do a really quick demonstration of John cool. Short Rose. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'll set you up. I will just look pretty for a oh. moment. Okay, I love these guys. I chose absolutely terrible yarn and needles to demonstrate this with because they are exactly the same color. So my apologies, folks. That's on me. Mm -hmm. I take full ownership. <laughs> and while everybody is... You want to come around Yeah, I'm going to come around there. Um, while we're setting up, um, think of any other last burning questions you've got that we might be mm -hmm. able to answer at the end of this. I'm gonna come up, ooh, I'm gonna come up and reveal. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, Emily did a really cool um, improv on this sweater. I did, I'm not entirely sure I love it. I might rip it out, but we'll, not the whole sweater, just to the yeah. part, but I had That's two cool. skeins of one, and then I had one skein of a different color. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it's not long enough. So I added some contrast feather and fan at the mm -hmm. bottom. Which is kind of a fun thing. It is. It's yeah. very summery and lacy. It and is. Lovely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so if you just want to look at the screen so I know I'm, I'm going down to the right spot. I'm looking at the screen. Yeah, I think we're good there. Yep. Yeah. Go a little closer. Okay. And go down like this. Alrighty, so I've got this little swatch left over from my fixing your knitting mistakes class. FYI, we're doing another one in oh, good. May, I think, if anybody wants yeah. to take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, alrighty. So we're going to start with the knit through the back loop. And so when we knit, we normally go up and to the back. Knitting through the back loop, you're going to come and go in through this back loop here, like so. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. I'll do it from this side so you can see where in the stitch I'm going in. And then, so when I'm knitting, I go in through the back loop, I wrap my yarn, come out front, and off. Let me do it again. So knit through the back loop, and off. Okay, so that would be knit one through the back loop. Uh, let's try this right lifted increase. So you can see we've got our regular stitch here on the needle and then under it we can see the bump from the previous stitch and the legs of the bump kind of come down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my needle not into the stitch but I'm going to stick it into the stitch underneath like so and I'm now I'm gonna knit. So I'm knitting the stitch below. I come out. I don't kick anything off the needle yet because now I'm gonna go into the stitch proper. So it's almost like a knit front and back, except it lies a little bit differently, a little less mm -hmm. obvious than the knit front and back. Let me, I'm gonna knit two stitches and then I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so this is my stitch. This is the stitch below. I'm gonna go into the stitch below. I'm not gonna go like all the way through. I'm just gonna lift up that bump, mm. grab and knit it, and then knit the one that's still on the needle. Do we have any questions? Anyone panicking no. in the comments yet? No. Okay. <laughs> um, are you doing this on purl bumps or? Yes, you are doing it on pearl bumps. I did not do that on purpose. Okay. But you are. You're doing the increased stitch on the pearl row. Yeah, do you want to grab the... She's getting some paper. Sample. Oh. <laughs> Small uh -huh. child. So we have the ribbing here. And so in the transition row, you're going to be doing this increase where you were purling. So you'll be grabbing that pearl bump 
and then the, the stitch that it's okay. hanging off of. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. Um, so I'll do it one more time. Um, so let me just knit a couple stitches regularly. Mm -hmm. Good. And then, so we're going to go into the stitch underneath. Pop back out. Then onto the stitch proper that's on the needle. Pop back out and off. And let me finish that row real quick. Uh, and we can do the German short rows super quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. And so when you do, um, so the right lifted increase mm -hmm. is different when you get to later on in the pattern, is right? It? I don't think because so. it's on stockinette. Oh, when okay. It, when yeah. it's on stockinette, it if will be different. You were right. Okay, hold on. Let me pull this row real quick. Oh, in front of everybody. <laughs> I can't speed knit uh, with people watching. I we'll just chat. The cat awkward. is kind of. I know. Around, I, I know keep thinking it's the small child, but no, the cat has been. Normally, he hides when I come over. Well, or he, he's very cozy. He's sleeping. Yeah. But he saw the box that the uh, <laughs> that the ring light came in, and he was very carefully try trying to check it out. And, <laughs> and you, you I got think up. he was gonna knock it yeah. over and okay. scare himself. So let's try. <laughs> let's try the right lifted increase on stockinette fabric. Yeah. Because later on, yes. when you get to you the later later um, in row. Do, do. Section three, I think, yeah. is when you start doing. Um, You're right. Right lifted increase. Yeah. Increased. All right. So uh, we don't have a pearl bump this time. Um, but it might also be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't have pets, so this is just endlessly entertaining. I don't know if you're embarrassed, but I'm not. I'm enjoying it. Um, so this, uh, we can see this is the stitch on the needle, and this is our stitch underneath, this sort of upside-down U-shape that sort of interacts with the stitch on the needle. And we're going to go into that bottom stitch first, wrap our yarn, come back out, and then go into the live stitch. And so I'll do that again. Knit two. This is going to be the wackiest uh, swatch. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> like, whoa, we increased a lot. Um, so, we've got stitch on the needle, we've got stitch underneath. So, I'm going to go into the stitch underneath, wrap, come back out, and then into the stitch on the needle, wrap, come back out, and off. Um, and that is the right lifted increase, mm -hmm. which is a nice kind of like you can kind of see it here. With this one that we've already done, it's a little bit more invisible than that knit front and back. The knit yeah. front and back always has a little pearl bump. Yeah. So this is a, I think that's why this designer used it. And I also think that's why this pattern was like kind of exciting because I'll, I hadn't really seen the right yeah. lifted increase in a couple other techniques. In Usually this. it's make one. Yeah. Make so, one left, right, or um, knit front and back. Yeah. So this pattern taught me a lot of new different yeah. knitting techniques. Yeah. I just wanted to show, mm -hmm. in case people are wondering what the difference is between knit through the back loop mm. uh, for your yeah. ribbing. So when when you knit through the back loop, you are twisting, Yes. you're twisting the legs of your stitches, mm -hmm. right? So you get this really tight um, knit row on yeah. your ribbing, right? Yeah, the knit stitches are, are, are tight and they're kind of prominent. They sit above the work a little bit. Yeah compared with regular ribbing. Mm -hmm. So it's a little flatter. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that there's a little bit more of a profile on the knit one through the back loop. Now, because it's tighter, it doesn't mm -hmm. have as much bounce as a traditional ribbing would have. Okay. So you wanted a more sweatery sweater, and that would make sense because you want a little bit more of the um, bounce back. Yeah. That ribbing has. It has sort of that stretch and come back. Yeah, I wanted yeah. it to, to be cozy. Yeah, yeah. whereas this one will not s bounce back as quickly, and even more so if you decided to purl through the back loop as well, which oh, is a yeah. technique that I've seen in some patterns. I've I don't usually do it, but um, oh yeah, I guess you could probably see the difference, sort of. So you see these this ridge pop up here, but if you flip it and you see the back side of the purls, those are just... Mm -hmm. Really stretched out knit stitches. So. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they look that way by comparison. So. 
Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that sort of explains why why you might make some of those choices. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as you can see, we um we can really you can really riff on this pattern. Yeah. Like the Felix, which is really fun. Yeah, exactly. Alright, let me do a super quick short row demonstration for yeah. German short rows. So I'm going to knit two stitches. I don't know, knit however many the pattern says. And then it's gonna give you um an instruction, and that instruction is uh, to turn, which is pretty on the nose. So turn your work. And I usually, because I like um, to have visual indicators to remind me that I need to pay attention to something, mm -hmm. I'll usually pop a marker on here so that I remember this is where I did my short row turn. You do not need to do that. It's usually pretty visually obvious, unless you're watching like the murder show and somebody's getting murdered. Uh, <laughs> and then you're not really paying attention. Um, so... Uh, you can pop a stitch marker if you want to. So then you need to do the slip German short row stitch. So it's SL-GSR in the pattern. And luckily the German short row stitch is the same no matter what side of the fabric you're on. So you just slip purlwise, yank the yarn to the back. You can see you get kind of a double stitch. This is the original stitch. Yank mm -hmm. the yarn to the back so you get that double stitch. Mm -hmm and then do whatever the pattern calls for. So in this case, I'm gonna purl. So bring the yarn to the front and purl all your stitches. Do, 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 do. And then when you have purled all your purl stitches and you need to do a German short row turn again. So then you're just going to turn as indicated. And you're gonna do the same thing. Have the yarn in the front, slip purl wise, yank the yarn to the back around the outside mm -hmm. and you get that funky double stitch again and then you just keep going you might want to tug it extra tight mm -hmm. for that first stitch just so it doesn't get all loose and floppy and then work your way back to the last one so this one here the last german short row you're just going to knit it like it's a i don't know knit two together or yeah that funky stitch just go into both legs wrap come out and then knit the next couple of stitches as indicated, and then turn, slip purlwise with the yarn in front, yank around the back, mm -hmm. and then in this case I'm purling, so bring the yarn to the front again and purl. And that's the German short row in yeah. a nutshell. And basically, well, like whenever I do, we can yeah, we can <laughs> back. go back around. So um, short rows are one of those things that. Um, are just for a short amount of time in the pattern, yeah. usually. Um, I have a hard time with short rows, so don't feel like it's just you. Yeah. Um, just go step by step. Yeah. Uh, it um, helps to yeah. check it off also, I find. Yes, absolutely. But one of the things that I love about this pattern is that because she tells you exactly how many stitches, instead of saying like, knit to marker, knit this many, yes. she says exactly how many yes. stitches, so you can tell what row you're on, by counting how many from the middle marker to where your last turn was. Mm -hmm. But checking them off is a really good idea so that you don't get lost and accidentally short row your short rows. Yeah, because, um, yeah, it's Bring a those, map, you'll get lost in the ocean. It's one of those things <laughs> that you just have to pay attention. It's not yeah. hard, you just have to pay attention and it's a and, short period. And it's yeah. just for a bit. Yeah. So yeah. just keep that in mind. Yeah. Don't stress about it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You got this. Um, um, and you can put a lifeline in. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We, I mean, I think yeah. at this point we've demoed lifelines in every knit along because it's such a handy technique. Yeah. And it really helps if you're just, if you're feeling nervous about tr anytime you're trying something new. Exactly. Um, if you don't know what a lifeline is, um, it's basically where you put um, a thread of wool through the live stitches. I think we demoed it we most demoed recently it. in our um, mm -hmm. our girl's best friend, a week two yep. probably. Yep. Um, yep, so you put that yarn in. And so you can do that as many times as you want. So mm -hmm. if it takes you forever to get that cast on ready or mm -hmm. to get those short rows right, stick in a lifeline. It's like pressing the save button when you're yep. playing a video game. And then if you die later on in the video game you get reset back to that safe point mm. and so if you are nervous if you have anxiety like i do um 
use lifelines to your advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So like put one in when you're done your ribbing. Put one in when you're done your short rows. Yeah. It's good to put it in at kind of a um, a basic point. Yeah. So you you're not having out. to like fuss with, you know, knits and pearls. Yarn it, overs. Uh, just, yeah. a, just a knit row is mm -hmm. a good row to put it in on. Yeah. And maybe put a note in your pattern where you put the lifeline so mm -hmm. that you're not like, oh my God, what <laughs> row is this? Ask me how I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> make notes for yourself. Yeah. Make it. Make it a fun experience for yourself. Exactly. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> if we can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, so any last questions before we log off for tonight? Just to recap your homework, mm -hmm. you can complete it on any timeline you want, uh, is to get up to section three. We are going to start at the beginning of section three, the yoke, next week. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking, making sure we didn't miss refresh. anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know what? Is really funny is I thought about this literally on my lunch break. <laughs> yeah. Like, What's our knit along hashtag again? <laughs> no, I, we're not doing it. But it's just, it's fabricationer. Okay, fabrication. Or fabrications ought. Yeah. Or, or tag us. So if you are uh, on Instagram, uh, yeah. I don't know if it works on Facebook. I don't go on Facebook very often. Um, we have a, we have a social group, a, mm -hmm. a Facebook social group. Um, it's called Fabrications Social, S-E-W-C-I-A-L. Mm -hmm. You can post pictures of your projects. You can ask questions there as well. It's yeah. sort of a com it's like a community sourced information. So customers might hop on the thread and, mm -hmm. and give you advice as well. Yeah, um, but tag us in your posts. Um, yes. So please. that we see what you're working on. If you want to post pictures of your, your whips yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, progress, progress pictures. Vicki, hi. Yeah. She says, D did you cover how to ombre with two mohairs stranded together? Oh. That's intriguing. Uh, um, Vicky, we did not. No. But wait, ombre is in like transition from more than one or just holding two strands together? Because that I can demo at any point. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting. Dina! Hi! <laughs> I'm seeing all these fabulous yeah. names of people. Um, uh, Vicky, if... Uh, Transition more than one color. We did not cover that, but yeah. you will not have gotten to that point by next week. Mm -hmm. Well, you might have, but we will not have gotten to that point yeah. by next week. I, um, we can add it to. Yeah, the, I'm wondering about... what, what like how like depends on how many colors yeah. you're doing. I'm not really sure. Like, um, yeah, Vicky, you want to send the shop an email? Yeah, and Caitlin will forward it to me, and uh, we can figure out an action plan to, to, in, to incorporate mm -hmm. how to transition if you want to do like a fade. A fade knit. Yeah. Okay. So oh, the art yarns. Okay. Yeah. That's a great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That gives me a place to start. I will have follow up. Um, yeah. Okay. On how to. Vicky, for context, has a kit that has multiple skeins and she's going to make the sweater out mm -hmm. of it. And so she wants to know how to. Um, Let, how, how to, to fade it yeah. and how to make sure she's got enough yarn so that she can do the a, a nice smooth fade. Mm -hmm. And Vicky let us know how what kind of sleeves you want. That will also be yeah. like part of the consideration. Yeah, like if you want to have the same fade in the yeah. sleeve. Yeah. Or different. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for next week. Yeah. I can't wait to see what that looks like. Yeah. I'll have I'll have to look at that up. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, please tag us in pictures. <laughs> I just it now just hit me that like everybody's going to be doing something so yeah. different. Um I saw on the uh, uh, the pattern page, mm -hmm. one of the top photos, mm -hmm. like maybe the sixth photo down, somebody has made one that looks dip dyed. Oh, I don't know if they used a, a fade, a faded yarn. I don't know what the sleeves look like, but the top of it is like, uh, like a light color, like gray or Ooh. cream or something. And then down at the, at the bottom of the body, it's like, pink but oh. it's it fades into the pink oh. so i don't know if they used multiple yarns or cut to everybody logging off of this video yeah I'm going on to ravelry to try look at ravelry if you're able to use ravelry <laughs> yes. yeah yeah if not um, let us know if you want to see what that looks like we can yeah, send you a picture for sure <laughs> all right yeah i think that's it for this evening yeah i think everyone's just there's no more questions it's yeah. just thanks and and you can always put questions wonderful in the positive feedback mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet. It was really great to be here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we'll see you again next week. Yeah. Uh, have fun and uh, see you then. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> and that was the ET phone home moment. <laughs>